Amen. Father, we thank you for these uh, workers meeting tonight. We we'll bless your name for bringing us together. We we'll thank you for your word. We we'll thank you for your spirit. And we we'll pray that the outpouring you have promised the church, all flesh, brothers and sisters, those who are in Christ, I pray you'll pour the spirit upon us abundantly in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight, we're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. We're reading from verse 1. Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, verse 2. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Then in verse 3 it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. Then we go to verse 16. It says in verse 16, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, verse 17, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons, and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Then in verse 18, it says, And on my servants, and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Already we're familiar with those verses of scripture. And in Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 28, here is where the apostle Peter took the quotation. It says in Joel chapter 2 verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions then verse 29 verse 29 says and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days it says will i pour out my spirit from those two references, Old Testament, New Testament, the original promise and prophecy, and then the fulfillment in the New Testament for the apostles and the disciples of the Lord 120 all together, we're looking at the divine purpose for the outpouring of the Spirit, the Spirit of God as the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and the pouring out of his uh, power, of his refreshing, of his energy, and of his uh, purposeful uh, out, uh, out, outcome in the lives of the people, outpouring of the Spirit, it has a purpose. What the divine purpose? That's what we are looking at tonight, so that as we pray, as we receive, and as we have the empowerment of the Spirit, the enrichment of the Spirit, and we have the renewal of the Spirit, we'll be able to know this is the outcome of the outpouring, the baptism of the Holy Ghost in our life. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, empowerment by the spirit he comes upon us he comes within us he overflows in our lives and he energizes us he empowers us he emboldens us so that 
we can do the work he has given us to do in the power of the spirit number two is the enrichment in the spirit how does our life become? How rich will our lives be? And how profitable will our lives be? And how prospered will the work of the Lord be in our hands when we're not only saved and not only sanctified, but we're filled, we're immersed, we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, enrichment in the Spirit. And now number three is the entrance into the spirit baptism how do we enter into that experience how do we enjoy that experience and how do we carry through experientially with the experience of the baptism empowerment immersion in the holy ghost we're looking at number one now number one is the empowerment by the spirit we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter one and we're reading from verse four here we are told what jesus said to the people to all the disciples without exception the men and the women the the uh, the old and the young that were there it says in acts chapter one verse four it says i'm being assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the uh, promise of the Father, which says he, ye have heard of me. It says, being assembled together with them. Who are the them? Who are the people? Are they only the apostles? Are they only the disciples? Who are these people? These are people who had followed him. He said, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. And they rose up and they followed him. These are people whose names are written in the book of life. He says, rejoice not because the devils are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. These are the people who had the assurance in them. They had been born again, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of of God. These were the people he had empowered originally. He gave them power to heal the sick and cast out devils. And the seventy returned and he said, Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. He said, Rejoice not because of that, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. These are the people that have had power. He said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy these are the people he told that nothing shall by any means such as these are the people that have been baptized in water not only they were baptized in water the apostles also baptized other people in water they were not novices they were not strangers to the kingdom of god they were not strangers to salvation these were the people he prayed for sanctified them through thy truth thy word is true so we understand when he said he assembled together with them yet he died he rose again the third day and then he appeared to them by many infallible proofs because they were the they were the disciples of the lord and the followers of the lord so we understand he wasn't talking to sinners he wasn't talking to backsliders. Those who were backsliding, he had restored them. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. That means receive the refreshing of the Holy Spirit so that the, the testimony of the Spirit and the evidence of the Spirit came alive in them again. Now he assembled with them. And before he left them, he now commanded them. They could have said, we know Christ already. He said, that's not enough. We've seen him after the resurrection. This, he said, that's not enough. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. How many of us are too much in a hurry to run here and run there without the empowerment of the Spirit? How many of us will say, I've witnessed before that people have been converted. In fact, I've prayed for the sick and they have been healed. These disciples uh, of these 120 that waited 
72 of uh, 82 of them that is 70 and 12 they had already healed the sick and they already cast out devils and yet jesus said with all that you have done a greater thing is coming a greater responsibility is laid upon you remain in jerusalem which for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Then in verse 5, in verse 5 it says, John, for John truly really baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized, immersed in the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Why would they wait and why would they pray? Why would they be immersed and deep and baptized in the Holy Ghost? Not many days hence. It tells us in verse 8. In verse 8, it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Happen to where you receive some kind of power. Yes, you have. As many as received him, he gave power to become the sons of God. Even as many as believed on his name, power, the power of sonship they had already. And the power for service as he sent them out and give them power and authority. They already healed the sick. The power for service in a limited measure. But he now says for a great measure and for a baptismal measure and for a continual measure that you will go, you will run, you will not be weary, you will walk, you will not fish, and you will do the work I've been doing. And you'll pray to the sinners, they'll be convicted, you'll have the power of God striking them, penetrating them, pricking them, and driving them to Calvary. That's what you are waiting for now. That's why he says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem in Jerusalem where they have intimidated you where you were fearful where you ran away where you stood and, and you stayed behind closed doors you'll open the doors in Jerusalem where the Sanhedrin the members of the Sanhedrin are in Jerusalem where they crucified me in Jerusalem where they don't want to hear the word and they resist with all their tradition in that same traditional place you will be a witness unto me and then he says in all Judea there will be no patch you'll see we can't go there because of this because of that and then in Samaria in Samaria where you wanted to burn them with fire because they will not receive me you'll go there when the power of the spirit of God has come upon you there will be no difference between Judea or Samaria in fact where you don't understand their language you don't understand their culture he says unto the uttermost part of the earth that is the power that's the empowerment that comes upon us when we are baptized in the Holy Ghost look at Luke chapter 24 I'm reading from verse 49 it says and behold I send the promise of my father upon you I said, he was uh, talking to them, and it's at the age of Luke. And as you come from, uh, you know, Luke chapter 1, you've seen the manifestation of the Spirit of God. In chapter 1, we are told the Spirit, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. And that thing that shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Even Mary, that had the Holy Ghost overshadowing her, she must be among these people to receive the power of God. This one is greater. This one is higher than the taste of the Holy Ghost you have had before. And you know that in chapter 1 of Luke, it says that the Holy Ghost came upon, a, upon Elizabeth, upon Zechariah, even upon John, because John will have the Holy Ghost, even from the from the womb and yet this is greater a greater measure a higher measure of the power of the holy ghost in our lives the people that are saying do i need the holy ghost baptism 
I've done this, I've done that, I've got this, I've got that. These people that had the influence of the Spirit of God, the transformation through the power of the Holy Ghost, and they had acts, they came alive. And the Holy Ghost was breathing alive in them, yet there is still the measure of the power of the Holy Ghost they had never known. He said, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. There are people that give excuses uh, that they cannot obey the word of God. Tarry, tarry. They say, people are dying. I must go out. They say, I cannot even uh, come to church. I cannot fellowship because while you are trying, uh, you are feeding yourself and you are praying and you're worshiping with the other people people are dying and because of those who are dying i must rush out but jesus knew that people were dying jesus knew that sinners were perishing yes sinners are perishing if you don't have the power if you don't have the unction if you don't have the empowerment if you don't have the vision the wisdom if you don't have the penetrating spirit of god that will help them and bring them to the lord and say they're dying therefore i'm rushing out jesus said don't rush out don't give any reason any excuse to disobey but tarry in the city of jerusalem until ye be endued and doubt and overwhelmed with power from on high. Uh, that, uh, my kind in the Old Testament, Micah chapter 3, verse 8, he had a kind of, um, he tasted a foretaste of this kind of power when that power of the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Yes, there is speaking in tongues, but the ultimate is not the speaking in tongues. There are people who speak in tongues, they don't understand the scriptures. There are people who speak in tongues, they don't have the vision, the passion. They do not have the consecration. They do not have the, the, the go-getting attitude. And they do not have the drive to do what the Holy Ghost was to do. Speaking in tongues, initial evidence of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Initial is not the end. It's not the ultimate, it's not the most important uh, evidence that you have the Holy Ghost, the fire inside you. About the people that speak in tongues and, and they repeat uh, those tongues, repeat those tongues. The same tongues they've been speaking for many years, they repeat and repeat. They have a local, a local kind of uh, a renewal in them. But the people that really have the power of the Holy Ghost we are talking about, the power of the Holy Ghost that will evangelize the world, that will heal the sick, that will raise the dead, that will do the spectacular. That's what Jesus was. In Micah chapter 3, we're looking at verse 8. It says, but truly, it says, truly, and truly today and presently and it says as i look at my life and as i look inward truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord the baptism in the holy ghost as we continue as we deepen ourselves as we refresh ourselves as we look up to god that that power will be fresh every time it makes us full it makes us full and you are ready at any time every time for the ministry of the spirit of god and of judgment and of might to declare unto jacob his transgression and to israel his sin do you remember peter on the day of pentecost he was able to declare to the people their sin and their transgression and he so declared it they were pricked in their hearts and they said men and brethren what shall we do that's the power of the holy ghost that the empowerment that he gives unto us in luke chapter 1 reading from verse 15 it says for he shall be great in the sight of the lord uh, when 
when you have the power of the Holy Ghost, the Lord looks at you in a peculiar way, in a, in a serious manner. Because he knows you have uh, singled out yourself. You have identified yourself and you have come out of the crowd of many, many Christians. Many, many Christians that are, they do not amount to much in the sight of the Lord. Uh, they are children of God and for the kingdom of God, for their personal Christian lives, they are all right. But then for God to look at them and say, my vision for the world, my salvation for the world, here is a particular peculiar instrument that will be part of the people that will make it possible and so the Lord looks at them and he says it's great in the sight of the Lord he shall drink uh, neither wine nor strong drink uh, there are things that the generality of people do the generality of people take and generally of generality of people the way they spend their time and the things they do and the socializing and everything they do that a person is filled with the holy ghost a person who will see visions and dream dreams he has a great dream a great passion and he wants to have a, he wants to have all those sinners everywhere anywhere converted to the lord there are things he doesn't have time to do there are things he doesn't participate in he will take neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And you know that the life of John was totally different because of that presence of the Spirit and because of that purging by the Spirit and because of that power of the Spirit in his life. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. That's the evidence that we have the presence, the prominence, the power of the Spirit in us. And then we have the proclamation that is coming through us will be the proclamation by the Holy Spirit. And we turn and turn and turn the minds of people, the hearts of people to the Lord. Then in verse 17, it says, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. He will go before him in the spirit in the power of Elias now you understand Elijah worked many miracles but in the case of John the Baptist the word of God says and he did no miracle miracle like calling fire to come down from heaven miracle like praying according to my word there will be no there will be no rain or deal all these years according to my word miracle of multiplying the widows uh, the widows uh, meal uh, in the pot and the oil to miracle of raising the dead child of that uh, widow all that Elijah did all that John the Baptist did not do but the power that uh, Elijah manifested when the people had followed Baal he said oh God hear me that the people may know that I've done this according to your word and the fire fell and the people then said the Lord he is God the Lord he is God they turned away from Baal and they turned to the living God that's the power that's the ultimate the fire and God is not there the earthquake and God is not there and the wind and God is not there but then he still small voice that comes to the heart of the people and they know that the Lord is God when we have the power the power not with the one wind the power not with bringing fire from the sky to consume and to sacrifice the, the power that turns the minds of the people away from what they had been doing what they were following the idolatry they were following and they now follow the way of the Lord that's the power it says and it shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people for 
the uh, for the for the lord that he is the lord coming the first time he came to earth to come and uh, you know sacrifice for the salvation of humanity that the following day the next day john said jesus coming unto him uh, and revealed uh, him christ to the uh, people there behold the the the, uh, the son of god the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world that's the revelation and that's what you have to do to point the lamb of god the sacrifice final sacrifice the savior to point him to the people and to point the people to the savior to connect the sinners and the savior to connect the world unto the savior so that uh, they become reconciled with god through jesus christ that's why the power is given and that is why we're waiting that is why we're looking up to the lord so that the power of the holy ghost through us will bring many sinners to the lord acts of the apostles chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 31 remember we're talking about empowerment by the spirit the spirit comes upon us and empowers us so that we will preach the gospel with assurance with conviction and it will lead the people to the lord and make them the people of god acts chapter 4 reading from verse 31 and when they had prayed the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost they had been baptized before they had been filled before and uh, you know they didn't just continue speaking in tongues and repeating the old old song uh, and it makes a rot in them uh, and they are can and they were canon and and uh, you should know they prayed again and the holy ghost renewed the infilling in their lives and they speak the word not speaking in tongues yes speaking in tongues very good but they spoke the word with boldness then verse 33 in verse 33 it tells us and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all now paul the apostle that came later after these initial apostles had done great things look at romans chapter 15 reading from verse 18 in romans chapter 15 verse 18 for i will not dare to speak of any of those things which christ has not wrought by me to make the gentiles obedient by word and deed the reason why paul the apostle received the infilling, the empowerment, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is that the Gentiles that have never known about the Jewish religion, the Gentiles that didn't have the law of the Old Testament, the people that were total idol worshippers and they were ignorant of the only living God in heaven, he went to them and in the power of the Holy Ghost, he was able to bring them out of darkness to light. He was able to bring them them out of their idolatry to serve the living God. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, it says, Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. Mighty signs, not just ordinary signs, the mighty signs that those Gentiles, those idol worshippers, saw, and they said, we could never have done anything near this by our idol worship. It convicted them. Why are we worshiping idols if there is the living God and that living God pours his spirit upon a man of a like passion like we are? And God, that man is able to do something that no idol anywhere in the gentle world can do. He says, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached 
the gospel of Christ, the power. The empowerment is not just, you know, to stay in the private, afraid, and to stay in our rooms, and then where, you know, have the Holy Ghost, have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost sends us out. The Holy Ghost empowers us so that we can go to the people that have not heard and preach the gospel of Christ. And then he tells us in verse 20, it says, Yes, so have I strive to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Then in verse 21, it says, But as it is written to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see by the power of the Holy Ghost, their blind eyes were opened. Their spiritually blind eyes were opened. And they could see. And it says, and they that have not heard shall understand. It tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 7. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. Uh, what we're learning here is uh, Timothy wants to be an evangelist, do the work of an evangelist. But how do I go to that, those dark places? How do I go to those uh, who are preaching of demons? How do I go to those occultic people? No, when the Holy Ghost comes upon us, we do not have the spirit of fear. Fearing their religion, fearing their tradition, fearing their occultism, and fearing their powers of darkness. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, and the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. That's the empowerment we receive when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now, everyone can now tell by himself, have I got this kind of power? I say I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. I say I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I say I am speaking in tongues. Do I have this empowerment? Because this is the ultimate test and this is what he wants to find out in our lives if i have not got all this power and the power is available for the promises unto you and to your children and to them that are called even to them that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call then it becomes our duty to tarry before the lord and to seek the face of the lord and to say what well, the rest of my life i'm going to evangelize i'm going to win souls i'm going to teach the word of god with this fullness of the power of the spirit we're coming to point number two point number two we're looking at enrichment in the spirit enrichment in the spirit in luke chapter 12 reading here from verse 11 the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, talking to his own disciples about the Holy Spirit. He wanted them to know what to expect. All right, if I have this measure of the Holy Spirit, if I have this immersion and baptism in the Holy Spirit, what should I expect? In Luke chapter 12, verse 11, and when uh, they bring you unto the unto the synagogue and unto the magistrate and powers take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say look at verse 12 in verse 12 for the holy ghost that shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say uh, many times, uh, many people cannot uh, say anything to the, to the unbelievers or to the highly placed, except they have a note. And some good, good people, real children of God, uh, they are eager that we evangelize. Uh, they give us uh, literature, which is good. We also have the literature, which is good. And we follow the four 
loss four spiritual loss number one number two number three and even if we don't know what to say the leaflet helps us and the material will produce the roman road to salvation that helps us one uh, all men are sinners we read that and we tell him and then no man can save himself the works of righteousness we have cannot save us we read that and tell them jesus died so that he can save us number three we read that and we tell them and then believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved but you know sometimes uh, reading from the notes like that reading from the outline like that and just reading and uh, the, the thing is dry and the thing doesn't really penetrate the heart and the fellow knows that we're not saying it from my heart we're saying it from you know a particular outline it doesn't reach them and we're not really winning those souls and we don't have conviction on what we're reading it doesn't come out flowing like gushing out with, uh, like water because it says it will flow out of your belly like rivers and then it doesn't come with fire and conviction but the Lord said the Holy Ghost shall teach you in that same hour what ye ought to say and hey, look at Matthew chapter 10 I will read him from verse 18 in Matthew chapter 10 verse 18 it says um, and ye shall be brought before a governors and a kings for my names for my sake and for a testimony against them and the Gentiles the Lord was telling them it will not only be the Jews they'll minister to they'll minister to the Gentiles too and then in verse 19 verse 19 says but when they deliver you up take no thought don't uh, say I don't know what I'm going to say so I need to check up this check up that I need to write this and uh, I hope I will not forget all these things I've written in my notes when I come to them take no thought what he shall speak for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak when the Holy Ghost is resident within us that Holy Ghost knows them he also knows us that Holy Ghost knows their background he knows what will catch them he knows what to reach them he knows the kind of illustration will give that you to get the message home to them he knows what they will hear that will make them remember their old life of sinning he knows what will actually bring them down on their knees that they'll confess their sins all our notes may not do that everything we try to get out of our brain may not do that but it says it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak then in verse 20 it tells us for it is not ye that speak it is not the word of man it is not the reasoning of man it is not the analytical word of man it is not he that's me but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you that is the enrichment enrichment in the spirit and the enrichment of the spirit we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 3 acts of the apostles chapter 6 and we're looking at uh, verse uh, 3 there wherefore brethren look ye among yourselves seven men of honest report look around look around and look for men of honest report how do we know men of honest report We've been interacting with them, their brothers, their sisters, the real children of God. And we have seen that no time are they dishonest. They are always honest. Whatever they tell us, you can go to market with it because it's the final, it's the truthful, it's the honest thing. Not only that, uh, of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost. How would you know them? We've been interacting with them. And what is inside will spill out. What is inside will, will, will reveal itself. We know they never say anything that is of the flesh.
flesh. They never say anything that is only uh, kind of superficial. They never say anything in our interaction with them. And we can tell, he is full of the Holy Ghost. He is full of the Holy Ghost. People should know us. That when we stand, and when we talk, and when we share, whatever we do, they know this man, this woman, is full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Holy Ghost and wisdom. The Holy Ghost doesn't say foolish things, doesn't say dummy things, doesn't say unrealistic things, doesn't say things that people will say. Why did they talk like that? Even somebody who is a sinner who went to school will not say that and does not relate with people like that. Why did he say that? These people, they knew them by interaction with them, that these were people full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom who we may appoint over this business. And then he tells us in verse 5, in verse 5 it says, And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose, they didn't have any difficulty choosing people people that are full of the Holy Ghost I think of brother so and so how about you I think of him too I think of uh, sister so and so how about I think of her too they knew all the people knew that these people they are believers like us they are children of, of God like us but they single themselves out that the people did not have any difficulty making a choice of them the same pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen. look at this a man full of faith when we're full of the holy ghost we'll be full of power we'll be full of faith we'll be full of love because it's the holy spirit that spreads the love of god in our hearts among the people and then it says of the holy ghost and they chose Philip and so on. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us, and Stephen, full of faith and power, the great wonders and miracles among the people. It wasn't an apostle, and it wasn't supposed to be uh, manifesting the power to work miracles. It was to distribute food. It was to share food. But every time the opportunity came up, in the city, in the community, anytime the opportunity came because he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, energized by the Holy Ghost, enriched by the, by the Holy Ghost. Every time the opportunity came, uh, he manifested faith and power, and he did great wonders and miracles among the people. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, we're told, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. They came with argument. They came with, you know, their background, philosophy, and everything. And everything, every time they came to him, the Holy Ghost was so present in his life, prominent in his life, mighty in his life, that he confounded all of them. That's the enrichment of the Spirit the Lord is telling us we need so that we will not be satisfied with what we got in the past. Look at 1 Corinthians. We're looking at chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Here Paul the apostle said he wasn't copying anybody. You know there are people who can you know, put some words down and put some sentences down and we can get this and that. But Paul the apostle said all that uh, the people will know that that is coming from the head. It will get to their head. They'll appreciate it coming to their head but their heart deep speaks unto deep and when it comes from the heart and is reaching out to the heart of the people is convincing them is convicting them it drives them to the cross of christ and they want to have the lord as their personal savior then look at number verse 9 in verse 9 it says but as it is reaching, I has not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God 
has prepared for them that love him. Paul the Apostle was saying the things that God has prepared for those who love God. Many of us don't know. Okay, I'm suffering persecution. If I endure, what's the end? What's the goal? What's the result? What's the reward? What's the outcome? What am I going to get? He says, it has not entered into the heart of my... Look at verse 10. In verse 10, but God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. We're baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're going through some deep waters. We're going through some things we cannot understand. And then the devil is saying, there you are. You are persistent. And there you are. You are enduring. There you are. You're still serving the Lord all your time, all your resources you give unto the Lord. You're going through this now. What are you going to have? What's the reward? And there many people are lost. It's true. If I go through all this, and yet, what am I going to gain? What's the result? Does heaven even know that I'm going through this? Does heaven know me that I'm an enduring, suffering, persecuted man of God, woman of God? Why am I going through all this? He says, when we have the spirit, the resources in the spirit, the enrichment in the spirit, he will reveal unto us by his spirit for the spirit searches all things yea the deep things of god that he reveals unto us look at verse 11 and in verse 11 it says for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god the things that god has reserved for you the things that god has said this will be yours this will be yours this will be yours if we don't know we'll be we'll be misunderstanding our situation look at uh, elijah elijah even after bringing fire down from heaven elijah even after dealing with those 400 and 450 prophets of Baal, and uh, when Jezebel heard, Jezebel said, sent to Elijah and said, by this time tomorrow, I will show you who is queen, because I'm going to take your head off uh, your body, and you, you did that to my prophets, don't you know, I'm, com I'm, I'm committed to those prophets of Baal, and you did that by this time tomorrow, and Elijah did not know, even though he had the Spirit of God, but he didn't have it to the measure that he will know he was going to be raptured, that he will not see that, that God was preparing chariots of fire and horses of fire to come and transport him out of uh, to heaven. So he said, oh God, I'm not better than any of my fathers. Take my life. Let me die in your hand. Let me not die in the hand of Jezebel. Uh, we, we get confused feels we get discouraged we get uh, disheartened we get depressed we might even have a, a kind of blood pressure or whatever because we do not know what god has reserved for us but when we have the holy ghost he is the one that reveals to us and he makes us to know the deep things that god has reserved for us look at verse 12 in verse 12 he tells us now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know we have received the spirit in this a great measure that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You remember recently in uh, one of the GCK uh, ministers' uh, messages, what God has given us. And we need to know what 
God has not given us and then the truth of the spirit that we ought to have and when we're filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost he makes us to know what we have in God that encourages us that, that, that gives spring in our feet because we know it's not in vain you're preaching it's not in vain you're praying it's not in vain you're enduring it's not in vain the Spirit of God makes you to know what God has given unto you and we're looking at verse 13 verse 13 says which things also we speak he gives you you know it it comforts you it encourages you it enlightens you it enriches you and then you speak it to other people to encourage them which things also will speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the holy ghost teacheth uh, he gives it to you and then for you to communicate it he even gives you the word you are to speak to commute to communicate what he has given you comparing spiritual things with spiritual we're looking at john chapter 14 reading from verse 26 in john chapter 14 verse 26 we're talking about enrichment in the spirit how he enriches our lives because of that presence and prominence and holy ghost in our life john chapter 14 verse 26 which is the holy ghost whom the father shall teach you all things that, that, that's what we have and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you he'll bring all things to your remembrance uh, matthew was one of the 12 apostles and he was with Christ and everything Christ was teaching how can somebody recollect the Sermon on the Mount all those verses chapter 5 chapter 6 chapter 7 yes it did because the Holy Ghost will bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you how could you write all those chapters in Matthew because the Holy Ghost shall bring to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you John was one of those disciples it was with him and everything that happened the history of the Lord Jesus Christ the interaction of the Lord Jesus Christ all the questions of those Pharisees what they asked him and the answers he gave and he went through all that and he wrote everything he said I could even have written more than this because there are many more things that Christ did which are not written here because if I was to write everything I suppose that even the whole world will not contain what will be written but these are written that she may believe that Jesus is the Christ he is the son of God and that believing he might have eternal life that's the office of the Holy Spirit to these people how can we then be so forgetful when we have the Holy Ghost and we don't remember the Word of God, trial comes, temptation comes, and we do not remember what we have heard that will give us backbone, that will strengthen us, that will make us to resist the devil by faith and make him to flee away from us. The baptism in the Holy Ghost, the empowerment of the Holy Ghost, the enrichment of the Holy Ghost will bring to remembrance all that he has said unto us. Look at John chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 7. John chapter 16, verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him not it i will send him unto you look at verse verse 8 it says in verse 8 and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin when you speak through you the holy ghost will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment then in verse 9 in verse 9 of sin because they believe not on me they will still be sinning because they have not believed on me they have been sinning in their lives and sin in their practice and sin in their lifestyle 
because they have not believed in me and the Holy Ghost that dwells in you, that enriches your life, the Holy Ghost that sends you forth and it goes with you when you speak. Their sins will be revealed. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Verse 11. In verse 11 of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. The prince of this world is judged. Sometimes uh, as we go through life, in a normal life, uh, we wonder, these people, look at what they are doing. Uh, we want to remain righteous and by the grace of God we keep to righteousness. These people, they steal and government money, they do this, they do that and they are riding cars we don't dream we might ever uh, drive and they're not getting the money by the, by the work and labor of their hand, they're doing this and we are not doing that and we're saying God will judge them, God will judge them, how am I sure? Sure that God will judge all these people. Are we punishing ourselves by not doing what they're doing? But when the Holy Ghost is resident in us, when the Holy Ghost is operating in us, He will tell us that there is judgment. Even the prince of this world will be judged. And we can rest our mind. We can rest our our soul. We can we can we know that we're not laboring in vain. We're not keeping to righteousness and vain judgment is going to come upon every evil doer. Look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Lord Jesus, do you mean they say the depth of truth and the height of revelation with all that we know are there things we still don't know? Well, remember you said, Blessed are your ears for what they hear and your eyes for what they see. That if God, I praise you, my Father, because this is your will to reveal this unto babes with all those things we have heard from Christ, with all those things we have known from Christ. Are there's still some salient truth, redemptive truth, that we have not heard Jesus said, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Verse 13, it says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. If we come short of being baptized in the Holy Ghost, if we come short of being immersed in the Holy Ghost, there are a lot of things, profitable things, enlightening things that we do not know yet, that we'll never know because it is that abiding presence of the Holy Ghost that will enlighten us and get us into that revelation. He says that the, when the spirit of truth has come, it will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. Uh, the, the disciples understand the rapture and tribulation and the one that comes first and the one that comes second when Christ was still with them. Did those apostles understand uh, some shall rise, uh, you know, to the resurrection of life and others resurrection of uh, damnation? Did they understand that when they rise and then those of us which are alive they didn't understand because Paul the apostle said I show you a mystery I show you something that other people have not spoken about that they have not heard he said we should not sorrow as people that do not have hope because if we believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we also will shall rise from the dead. We'll hear a voice from heaven. And when that voice comes like a trumpet, the dead shall rise. And then we'll be caught up together with them. And then we'll ever forever be with the Lord. He says,
says, says when the Holy Ghost comes, all those things we have not, we have not understood, we will understand because we will show you things to come. We are coming to point number three now. Point number three, we are looking at entrance into the spirit baptism. Entrance into the spirit baptism. How do we enter into this enrichment, into this empowerment, into this enlightenment, into this abundance of the Holy Spirit in us? Look at John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's the first step in entering into this a great experience. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, that's the water of the word that uh, comes to us here, clean through the word which I have spoken you know, unto you. And then it says, And of the Spirit, it is the Spirit that bears witness that we are the children of God because we have not received the spirit of bondage to fear but we have received the spirit that Christ Abba Father at the point of salvation so we have the first experience of salvation and then it says otherwise we cannot enter into the kingdom of God we're coming to John chapter 17 and we're reading from verse 14 John 17 we're reading from verse 14 I have given them the word and the world has hated them evidence they were born again evidence they are no more part of the world they are now the children of God and then it says because they are not of the world even as I'm not of the world born again born again look at verse 15 in verse 15 I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil verse 16 again emphasizes they are not of the world even as I am not of the world look at verse 17 sanctify them through thy truth that word is true chapter 3 salvation by the Spirit of God that makes them to have the first entrance, the initial entrance into the kingdom of God. Here, sanctification, we're coming to chapter 7 of John, and we're reading from verse 37. In chapter 7, verse 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. After we're saved, after we're sanctified, we still know there is something. We're still thirsty. We're still hungry. We still know that heaven has, is not exhausted and that the gifts of God, the grace of God is not exhausted and there's still something that we're thirsty for. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. In verse 38, verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. There is the well of water, salvation, and then we draw from that well the salvation of the Lord. But then there are rivers of living water. Look at verse 39. Verse 39, for, uh, but they speak in of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Saved, they should still receive the Holy Ghost in baptismal measure sanctified, they should still receive the Holy Ghost in baptismal measure, which they that believe on him shall receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given at that time, before Christ got to the cross, before Christ rose from the dead. 
but then uh, having been raised from the dead in acts of the apostles chapter 2 he has poured out this he has given us this which you now see and hear because that jesus was not yet glorified it tells us in um, isaiah chapter isaiah chapter 59 reading from verse 19 it says so shall they fear the name of the lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in in like a flood the spirit of the lord shall lift up his standard against him we're talking about how to enter and now as we enter all the things that used to flow us all the things that you to put her back to the wall the enemy comes in and he doesn't come in in isolation he comes in like a flood a flood of people a sea of haze and he wants to push us down because we now have this great measure of the Holy Ghost, it says the, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up his standard against him. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. And then in verse 21 it says, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, by my, uh, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth. The combination of uh, the word of God and the spirit of God, the scripture, and the Holy Spirit, Holy Scripture, Holy Spirit, combining together in our heart and giving us the power and giving us the backbone and giving us the stamina and giving us the enablement that the flood of enemies like a mighty water will be able to stand against it it says the word and the spirit the spirit and my word which i put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed says the lord from henceforth for and forever you know before the holy spirit came is salvation very great and sanctification very great but sometimes we go one step forward and we go two steps backward we're here where they're sometimes depressed and sometimes in the valley and sometimes on the mountains sometimes where we're stretched out we're fatigued but when the holy ghost comes and he enlightens the word he enlightens the word and sets it on fire within us it says it will not depart from us or from our converse or from our converse converse even henceforth and forever and now what are we going to do we're looking at Luke chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 9 he tells us now that this is available because remember the promise and the promise is unto you and to your children and to many as many as the Lord our God shall call anywhere and everywhere he now tells us how to enter we entered into the into salvation by the spirit of god into sanctification by the spirit of god and now we must have this endowment of power and this baptism in the holy ghost and we must have it and we must tarry we must wait until it is given to us and it tells us in luke reading from chapter 11 verse 9 and i say unto you ask and it shall be given you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you it says there's no shadow of doubt it says in the next verse in verse 10 it says for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone you're saved it's your right you're sanctified it's your privilege it says everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh you're so you're so uh, thirsty 
and you are so desirous you see it's a promise that is given to every child of God and it is given to me and therefore I ask and therefore I seek and therefore I knock and it says everyone that knocketh it shall be opened and then it tells us in verse 13 in verse 13 it says if ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more how much more is this look at yourself as a father and look at yourself as a mother and uh, your child is asking for bread is asking for maybe something even greater than bread and you give to them he says how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him he'll give you i said he'll give it to you it tells us in acts chapter 5 verse 32 it says and we are his witnesses of these things so also is the holy ghost whom god has given whom god has given to them that obey him if you obey him that to tarry if you obey him and you wait and you say i want this great measure of the holy ghost he'll give to you you might not be able to wait long here when you get back home and you say this is the word of god and you go through the word of god again and you ask he will give unto us in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to use the word ready so that we use the letters of that word ready and then by the grace of God as you go through them ready are renew your consecration are renew your consecration you're waiting upon the Lord and all your consecration your heart your soul your mind everything you give unto the Lord and you are ready to do whatever he wants you to do and you place everything on the altar he examine your conscience examine your conscience all the promises that were made to the lord before i will run i will walk i will preach i will pray i will intercede and i will go for the lord and nothing will be too great to sacrifice for the lord how have you obeyed our beautiful field all those things even examine your conscience a abstain from the contrary contrary if there are things that are contrary to the word of god and contrary to the will of god and contrary to the calling the lord has given you and the lord has made a deal a league with you a covenant with you all these many years but now some contrary things are coming in you want to go back to the lord and say lord i'm sorry i abstain from the contrary did dedicate all unto the commission the great commission the lord has given us here is gck here is evangelism here is soul winning and you dedicate everything you have all your strength all your energy all your resources all your intelligence everything you have all your power you dedicate to the commission and then why you yield unreservedly to christ you say jesus i am yours you gave your life for me and everything i can think about that comes into my hand that comes to my heart i yield everything renew your consecration examine your conscience abstain from the contrary and dedicate all to the commission yield and reserve a little christ the holy ghost will fill your life will saturate your life and in this life by the grace of god in the strength of the lord according to the promise of god you will do what you never dreamt of you could do in this life let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer and say lord i've heard about your promise of heard about the coming and the feeling of the holy ghost i yield i surrender myself unto you unreservedly call upon the name of the lord he's willing he's willing to baptize he's willing to energize he's willing to reach he's willing to empower he's willing to do everything until you have all the fullness of the holy ghost 
you could have and then you will serve the lord without any fainting and without fretting and without powerlessness in your life in jesus name